Okay, looking this time at geometric series or GPs, geometric progressions. So an example of a geometric series would be something like 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54, etc. And this time we've got a common ratio. So in APs we had a common difference and in GPs we have a common ratio. So you can see we have to multiply each term there by 3 to get the next term. We still have our first term as A. This time we have our common ratio is R and our nth term is A R to the power of N minus 1. Okay, our first question then. Find the general term for 7 plus 14 plus 28 plus 56. So we can see straight away it's a GP, not an AP. Our first term, A, is 7, and our ratio, we can see that it's gone up in 2s. So our nth term is going to be 7 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. And that's the general term for that series. Okay, our second one. Find the 20th term in the series 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54, etc. So here A is 2. Our ratio this time is 3. And our 20th term is 2 times... 3 to the power of n minus 1. So 2 times 3 to the power of 19. We get a massive big number for that. Okay, so that's the 20th term of that series. Okay, our third one then. The fourth term of the GP is 8. The seventh term of the GP is 27. Find A and R. So the fourth term, so that means we've got a r cubed is 8, and the seventh term, a r to the power of 6, equals 27. So if we put one over the other, you can see that the a's will cancel, and then using your rules of indices, r to the power of 6 over r cubed becomes r cubed. And then we can find r as the cube root. Putting that back into one of our um, equations here, we've got a times 3 over 2 cubed equals 8. So that's 27 over 8 a equals 8, which gives us A is 64 over 27. Okay, so the same as we had with an AP, we'll have to be able to prove the sum of a GP. So if we consider the sum, we've got A plus AR plus a r squared, etc., up to a r to the power of n minus 1. We're going to then multiply everything by r. So we get r s n equals a r plus a r squared plus a r cubed, etc., right up. That would be a r to the power of n. We're then going to subtract. So on the left hand side we have S, the sum, take away R times the sum. Now you'll notice when we subtract, all the terms will disappear apart from our first term up here and our last term here. So we leave that as A minus A r to the power of n, take s n out, 
take A out over here. And then divide through by 1 mi minus R and that is the sum of a GP. Okay, and just, um, there's two formats of this that we can use. Um, so there's the f one that we proved there, it's easier to use it when R is less than 1. If the ratio is greater than 1, it's easier to use this format here. You're just taking out minus signs, but it's just easier to do the R first. So just keep that in mind when you're doing the question, is the ratio less than 1 or greater than 1? So let's have a look. Find the sum of 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32. So A is 2, R is 2, and you can see we have 5 terms. So the sum of those 5 terms, our R is greater than 1, so I'm going to use the second version. So it's 2 upon 2 to the power of 5 minus 1 over 2 minus 1 and that works out to be 62. Okay, our second one, find the sum of the first ter 10 terms of 2 plus 6 plus 18, etc. So our first term is 2, our ratio is 3 and we're trying to find the sum of the first 10 terms. So we say the sum of the 10 terms again, our ratio is greater than 1. So it's 2 upon 3 to the power of 10 minus 1 over 3 minus 1. And the sum of the first 10 terms turns out to be 59,048. Okay, our third one, find the sum of the first term, 10 terms of 10 plus 5 plus 2.5 etc. So our first term is 10, our ratio this time is a half and we want to find the sum of the first 10 terms. So our ratio is less than 1, so I'm going to use the sum of the first 10 terms is going to be a and this time I'm going to use the 1 minus r1, so 1 minus a half to the power of 10 over 1 minus a half and when you work that out you get 5115 over 256 okay so within GPs then we've got a wee extra bit called sum to infinity so if we look at the um, the sum of the GP that we proved as a upon 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r when The modulus of r is less than 1, so when r is a fraction, when it's between 1 and minus 1, what happens is there, as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so as n tends to infinity, r to the power of n goes towards 0. So what happens is then we get this sum to infinity, we get 1 minus 0 at the top there, which just means we've got 1 over 1 minus r. So this is called the sum to infinity. Okay, we'll have a look at a couple of examples here. So find the sum to infinity of 10 plus 1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.01. So our first term is 10 and our ratio you can see is a tenth or 0.1. So that means sum to infinity will exist because the ratio is between minus 1 and 1. And you can see your terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So you're adding on a smaller amount each time. So it's tending, this, the sum of the series is tending towards a value. So the sum to infinity is a over 1 minus r. So 10 over 1 minus 0.1. And that is 100 over 9 or 11.1 1 recurrent. And our second one then, the first term and the common ratio of a GP are equal. The sum to infinity is 11. Find the value of R. 
So our first term and our ratio are equal and sum to infinity is 11. So our formula for sum to infinity is a over 1 minus r. So that's 11. a is r, so we can write that as r over 1 minus r. And bring across the denominator. Multiply out your brackets. Bring your minus 11r across and add it on which gives you a value of r as 11 over 12.